Ron Martinelli is a forensic criminologist and medical investigator. He joins us via Skype from near Los Angeles. Uh, Ron, more than 13 million people around the world take opium-like substances, including more than nine who use heroin. Do you find these numbers shocking? No, I, I don't find uh, the numbers shocking because of the prevalence of uh, both uh, opium and, and now an even more powerful uh, fentanyl that we're, we're getting from Mexico. So this is, uh, this is just par for the course. Uh, we have a fourfold uh, addiction uh, population now in the United States. You know, uh, this particular case you talked about in Ohio, it's interesting to note that approximately 18 people die a week in the state of Ohio uh, from overdoses on, uh, on opiates. So why is Ohio hit especially hard? Well, you know, it's not just Ohio. Every state in the United States is getting hit hard by this epidemic. Uh, look back east, look at New Hampshire, look at Vermont, look at Washington, D.C. I mean, the center of our government has a huge uh, addiction rate. Of course, we see it out here in the West Coast. Uh, we see it in the Midwest. I mean, it's all over the country. And uh, this, uh, this administration has got to come to grips uh, with uh, both you know, stopping uh, these drugs from coming into our country and stopping it at the source as well. Obviously, we do want to handle addiction as a mental health crisis instead of a criminal crisis, but we need the enforcement measures as well to put a strong message out there to those people who traffic and sell this poison to our, to our citizens. So who are the consumers and who are the producers? Well, 93% of all of the opioids uh, produced in the world come from Afghanistan, and the people that are involved in the trafficking of those drugs are the terrorist organizations. So, you know, when you think about terrorism and how that affects the United States and how it affects Europe, where one out of five people uh, die from uh, drug overdoses in Europe from, from heroin and opiates, you need to understand that that's a multifaceted battle where if we don't have people on the ground like DEA and things where we can get to the sources, we're not going to dry up these drugs. You know, 15 years ago, Afghanistan was still a big player, but the numbers were lower. It was, uh, they accounted for some 70% of the world's heroin. Now we're talking about more than 90%. So why the increase? Well, I, I think the increase is obvious. We don't have a presence in Afghanistan. We pulled our troops out, and don't forget, our our uh, drug administration, drug enforcement administration, cannot operate in a vacuum. They need to be able to have a military presence to provide them with the security and support they need to conduct the mission of drug interdiction. So when you pull troops out of a terrorist location, uh, they're going to go right back to to doing what they were doing before. So there's your increase for you. But there's a lot of places, not just Afghanistan, that are producing heroin, and these are not considered hotbeds of you know of of, of insurgency or terrorism. Well, you know, like I said, over 90% of those drugs are produced there, so we're talking about 10% more. Obviously, we're getting drugs from Mexico, like we've always had. We have a tremendous, again, incur, uh, uh, insurgence of fentanyl, which is a even more deadly drug uh, than heroin, opium. And uh, when you when you don't have a border solution, uh, when you don't have enough people on the border to interdict. Uh, you're going to you're going to have that, you know, free uh, entrance of drugs in, into our nation. And of course, we already have the consumer, which are the addicts. That's what addiction is. They're going to continue to purchase these drugs unless we can do intervention for them. Now, the United States government has only put up about two point three million dollars for health services. I mean, that that is just a, a, a just a small percentage of, of what it takes uh, the president of the United States to go on vacation every time he goes on vacation. We need to get we need to put hundreds of millions of dollars into this effort, into this health services effort to try to do something with addiction in this country. So it's a twofold process. Number one, interdict the drugs. Number two, uh, use health services to, to take care of addiction. And actually, number three, the other part of the enforcement arm is to uh, arrest, convict, and sentence drug dealers and traffickers to, I mean, very serious sentences to put them out of the, you know, to create a deterrent and, and put them out of the equation. 
put him out of business. All right, Ron Martinelli, thank you so much for your time, sir.